Hey guys, welcome to a brand new video about absurd fan theories. Before we dive into this one, we'd love it if you guys can take one quick second and hit subscribe on the channel. We're aiming to reach 1000 subs, and if you guys like the videos we've been pushing out, one click can go a long way. Now, on to the video. Muncher. Guys, guys, listen, I've kept it in way too long. It needs to come out now. I saw Endgame and I finally know how he does it. Who? Tony. Stark? Tony Stark? I've been investigating this nigh over four years now and I finally know how he does it. He didn't just magically crack time travel, he was sitting on it the entire time. He was using multiverse switches to go back and forth between Earth and Westeros. I've long believed that Tony Stark is a descendant of the Starks of Winterfell. First, let's just state the obvious. The name Stark? Hello? Do we need to hear more? The black hair? I mean, that should be enough, right? All the honor and duty and all the strong character points? It should be a lock already, but I'll still indulge everyone here. Tony Stark has been testing the time travel multiverse thingamajig situation from his basement since like Iron Man 2. And the first time he tested it, he appeared in this land which is really cold and full of these unevolved savages and he got stuck there and couldn't get out. So he decided to build himself a life there. We know his charisma is magnetic and he couldn't help himself showing the inhabitants his way and all of that. So obviously he developed a cult following which eventually turned into this house slash kingdom situation, you know, house Stark. And then he finally figured out how to get back and went on to kick some Chittori ass in the Avengers. Now he's really seen it all, right? Multiverses and aliens. By the time he ran another test on the multiverse machine, he noticed that his quote-unquote people were getting that ass handed to them by some dudes who looked all blue and brought the fog with them. So what does he do? He builds a massive wall with the help of Jarvis. And since people didn't understand technology too well, he told them it was magic. Ooh. And since these guys were so bad at documenting events in their life, everything Tony ever did was credited to some guy named Brandon. Well, he saved his people from destruction and realized that the people on Earth, the real Earth, needed his help again. So he came back and did his thing, you know, kicked some Mandarin ass, then made and subsequently kicked some Ultron ass, etc, etc, etc. But he knew he had to play the multiverse card close to his chest, and also that he couldn't keep going back to his people, now the well-established house of Stark or Winterfell or the land of Westeros, what a bunch of mumbo jumbo. So he went back one final time to pretend to be this heebie-jeebie magical creature known as the Three-Eyed Raven, just so he could develop a point man in Westeros who could take care of everything while he focused on the big picture. The big blue picture. The big blue all-powerful picture. I'm talking about Thanos. With the power of Greensight, which is a hocus-pocus name for multiverse jumps, he showed Bran Stark what the deal was, made him promise to keep it all to himself, otherwise he'd be in for a big spanking, and told him to, you know, just take care of shit. Knowing that these savages put a lot of faith in customs and sayings and what they remember of their history and stuff, he did what was needed to be done. Made up a few sayings like the North remembers and a Stark should be in Winterfell, and some stuff about Bran the Builder and Bran the Jogger and Bran the guy with colonitis, and just peaced out. And suffice to say, it worked. All the Stark character attributes are actually Tony's character attributes, if you think about it. Standing up against evil, no matter what the odds, a sense of honor and duty, not being malicious or conniving, healthy love of maidens, healthy love of ale, you know the deal. He also knew the snap would have heavy repercussions in this not so important alternate universe that he calls a second home. So the weight of undoing what Thanos did was doubly important. Well, almost. And he timed the snap perfectly. He consulted with Bran about what the right time needs to be so that the people in Westeros would think that Arya had something to do with the Night King dying. But if you notice closely, the Night King blows up just a split second before he stabbed. That's because Tony snapped right then, killing Thanos and the Night King and both their armies. I knew it. I just knew it. Tony's death will obviously be felt by everyone on Earth, but also by a lonely boy in a wheelchair somewhere in Winterfell who now has no clue what he needs to be doing. So he's just chilling. That's it for this edition of Absurd Fan Theories. But you gotta give this one credit, it kinda makes sense. Let us know in the comments below what you would like us to break down next, but be aware, we're only gonna do it if it's plausible. Kidding. Till next time.